Hey everybody, welcome to Primetime Kitchen's How Tuesdays. This is episode six. six, and today we're going to do Father's Day. We did Mother's Day, we have to do Father's Day, and tonight I'm going to answer the question and show you the single most asked thing by me in the history of my cooking life. I can't even say career because it's not a career, but it is how to cook a steak. Tonight we're going to make some beautiful New York strips. We have them laid out here. That's that little bitty full of his stories because <laughs> she doesn't like New York strip all that fat. <laughs> I likes the fat. We're gonna do a classic potatoes au gratin and show you exactly how easy that is. That's a dish, honestly, you can be eating once a week because it is one of these things we like to do in the oven. We're talking about saving time. It takes a little time to cook, but like zero time to prepare. And in the context of preparing au gratin, you're gonna make one of the mother sauces, which is cool because you don't know how to make a cheese sauce, but you can turn it to anything. Cheddar, parm, uh, smoked gouda, whatever you want to do. Great for dipping with bread. So that's a cool little technique thing we're going to learn tonight. We're going to do some braised kale, which I caught a lot of crap for. <laughs> and I'm not super excited about it. But you're like, kale with steak? Yes, kale with steak. Here's what we talk about balance, right? So we're going to have cheesy potatoes and a beautiful savory steak with what I call poor man's demigloss. And we're going to, this is going to give us some bitter, some crunch. It's going to be awesome. Trust me, you're going to love it and uh, the poor man demi-gloss. Demi-gloss is basically taking beef stock, which means you take the femur of the cow and vegetables and you roast all that down, then you pour water over that, you cook that down for hours. It literally is, it takes for hours. Even the pros, it takes forever to make good demi-gloss. We're gonna make it tonight quickly in a pan on the stove top. That's why we call it poor man's demi. You can make a really rich, flavorful sauce in a relatively short period of time. Matter of fact, the time the potatoes take to cook and you'll have a beautiful dish. So we're gonna step it up for dad tonight. And as always, we uh, start things off with a drink. Tonight, we're actually featuring some wines from Petty's Meats. Our friends over at Petty's, been with us for a, life, a long time, good guys. We have a Pinot Noir. And these are both from the Kendall Jackson Estate series, the Kendall Estate. We actually had their head vintner, their guy, their big great, the winemaker, on Primetime Kitchen as one of our first guests. And what a great guy, it reminds me of like Sam Elliott or uh, McLeod. He's like an old westerner, old west guy, but he knows how to make great wine. Sommeliers love this wine, and this is stepping it up time. Remember, it's Father's Day. This bottle's gonna be like $25. This bottle's gonna be like $22. So we're spending a little bit of money because it's a special night. Um, we're gonna add some white mushrooms to that demi, some, show you how to make that thing. Uh, I wanna remind you some things we do have going here with the show. Uh, of course, we always have merch. We have this brand new cup. Check this thing out. We just got this in today. It's like a big old 16 ounce matte green uh, coffee mug, which is awesome. It's got that. It's got our logo on there. I think it's just uh, like seven bucks on our website. That's ptkradio.com. We're also starting another feature on that called Side Dish. That's where I'm going to invite some like just cool people from the community of Orlando and have them in my home studio and just like have hour long conversations about everything from eating and drinking to just life in Orlando. You know, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And let's see what else. We want you guys to always take care of our other social media platforms, which Instagram, of course, is a Primetime Kitchen, and Twitter is PTK Real Radio. You'll find us there just by typing in Primetime Kitchen as well. That's a great wine, huh? Yum, yum, yum. Very I'm gonna, good. I'm going to switch to beer a little bit later. I'll tell you about that in a second. So, first things first, guys. Let's get some. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, we didn't cheers. How are we going to move forward without cheersing? I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> cheers. Cheers, my dear. Uh, as always, after the meal, I want to remind you guys, if you don't mind, share the video when we get done. We're, we're, get, we're really getting some steam. These things are a lot of fun for us. We want to keep doing as long as you guys will support us. Uh, we do have a couple of events coming up as well. Uh, I don't know if you have a ticket for Harry's yet, but Harry's Poolside, poolside uh, Bar and Grill this Friday night. We're doing that tasting with Chef Tala Luna, which is unbelievable. The tickets are 55 bucks. It should be a $100 ticket. Uh, I don't even know if there are any left, but you can call there. Of course, tomorrow night... At Marlowe's Lee Vista, we're doing PTK Live, and that menu is bananas. It's actually on the website right now as well. You can check that out. Uh, we'd love to see you there. And again, it's on the events page. Yeah, and again, events page on our website, ptkradio.com. Yeah. And again, I don't know how many or if any tickets are um, up. We do have another Primetime Live uh, coming up in July out in Orange City. I think it's Jack's 29. So we're going to be in Volusia County. You guys, come on and see us there. Volusia County, what's up? Plus, we're working on right now with a, <laughs> one of my favorite new chefs and a really cool guy, Bruno over at Millennial 106. 
He's got an awesome little spot there. And the cool thing about Bruno and Millennium 106 is he's bringing you like really cool high-end dishes at a very, very, very affordable price, for real. Plus, some of the best oysters ever. So uh, Bruno's doing some cool stuff, and I think we're gonna do a gig with him in August. That's out by the Mall of Millennium, so you guys out in that side of town are gonna see us a little bit soon. Aren't we giving away something tomorrow night? Oh yeah, tomorrow night at uh, at uh, the Primetime Kitchen Live, or Pizza Game yeah. Live at Marlowe's. Just confirmed with Frank Lossy, of course, the presenting sponsor of Primetime Kitchen on Real Radio 104.1, which you can hear to the podcast and stuff like that. Frank just said, we are tomorrow night. He just okayed us to give away a 10 inch chef's knife from Shun. Woohoo! You know, it's you know, it's a pretty good knife. It's like a hundred and fifty dollar plus knife. So we're gonna give that awesome. away tomorrow night. I don't even know how yet, but we're gonna give it away. So if you have a few minutes. Trivia or you know, games. Who knows? Oh, know. the games are so much fun. Yeah, we did the game, the Apple game. We'll do it. Who knows? Let's get this started because these things are gonna take forever to cook and we are literally yes. wasting so much time. So potatoes are rotten. Got to get them in the oven first because they take like 45 minutes to an hour to cook, all right? I've already turned my hands on to preheat these guys, and I have my oven going at 375. We're going to bump up the cooking time a little bit. So all we have is some russet potatoes. Okay. And we have our mandolin. Gotcha. And we set our mandolin or our slicer here at about... An eighth? Let's see. What is that? About an eighth. About an eighth. All right. So what we want to do is we're going to slice these up real nice. We're gonna get some good slices. Hey, will you sign the knife if they win? Of course I will. Why would you want me to sign that knife? That'll be cool. I want to reduce the value of something quickly. How can I do it? <laughs> I know. Have Jim Colbert touch it. <laughs> uh, I got my little uh, Rachel Ray bowl over there. So we're gonna keep this going and we're gonna get some good slices. We're also gonna do this to an onion because although this is a uh, very easy dish to make. No uh, fingertips. Oh God. No these, fingertips. These things are terrifying. Oh, what happened? My man went crazy on me. There we go. Um, so we're going to slice these up real nice and thin. Maybe. And really, to be honest with you, it kind of went backwards. I should have done my, uh, my bechamel <laughs> sauce first. You know what? That's it's how fine. Cook, that's how cooking is sometimes. Hey, Vero Beach. Hey, New Smyrna. Hello, Vero Beach. We like Vero Beach. Um, Brandon, no, we haven't named our logo yet. You know what? We've got to do that. Chefy McChef. Oh, my no. gosh. Maybe that's why we should give away the knife. What? If somebody comes up with a good name. Well, we've already, you know, I, I, did you see the Facebook post I put up asking? No, I, no. I should talk to you more. You should. We should communicate better. We should. As, as a couple, we should do better. We should. We're not going to make it. I got, <laughs> maybe. I, I got a bad feeling. Yeah? So these are three. Oh, You're this breaking this. Like, this is, what's happening uh, right now? You should buy me better stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got these going. All right, so. Usually we do this because these potatoes can turn colors. You put them in water, you can drain them out, whatever. Yep. We're not gonna really freak out about it. Here's what we are gonna do. So Tori needs to come over here. Okay. So we're gonna make what they call <clears throat> bechamel. Okay. Which is also known as one of the mother sauces. Now the mother sauces basically starts as, a, what you're gonna know is a roux plus milk, okay? So a roux plus milk. Now this is not a science. This is truly one of those cooking by eye things okay. that I really want you guys to start kind of doing. I know that the recipe thing, you, you know that I have a disdain for recipes, but we have about probably three tablespoons of butter. Okay. Now that's a little hot, but we're gonna be okay because I turned it down before. We're gonna melt this. All right. So people know what a roux is. Roux is that beautiful thing you make with fat and flour All right. that is the basis of gravy. It's basically it. So when you have fat and flour and then milk, uh, you have gravy. But if you have, let's say you, let's say you do this, you cook some all, some breakfast sausage. Okay. And when it's cooked, you throw in some flour and stir that around. Well, when you add milk to that, guys, after after cooking that flour out, well, then you have sausage gravy. That's exactly how easy it is. That's why this bechamel sauce is super important for technique when you start cooking and you want to kind of do some cool stuff. This sauce will give you a great binder for cheese sauces. You know, like I was just talking about the all gratin potatoes, which you can add any kind of cheese, like I said, you want before. So we're gonna put our flour in. How much that, was that? About a quarter cup. Okay. Okay, so you can see here at the bottom, we actually have it a little too hot. And here's the, I'm glad, God, I'm so glad that did this. Give me one second. Huh? Okay, all right. So if you'll look, see how that clumped up like that? Yeah. Okay, so I have too much flour. Not much, but too much. Here's the beautiful thing. That's why I say do this by looking. Let's add another tablespoon of butter. Okay. And the reason why is I want to show you exactly what this mixture should look like as we cook it down and make our roux that's going to wind up turning into our bechamel sauce. They said stir, stir, stir. <laughs> <laughs> How good is that wine, though, for real? That wine is delicious. That wine is delicious. i got to be careful, though, because I get wine drunk on I this know. podcast. I know. You're not allowed to have wine. 
a, for a lot. I've had to send you home on Uber a couple times by yourself. That's a true story. Dude, the worst thing is after the first At price. Dexter's. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. At Joe's. At Mama Me. At Mama oh, Lee's. well, that was a bad night for all of us. Yeah. But <laughs> That was the first Primetime Kitchen Live event, and holy red wine. <laughs> I think I was, was I crying to Jesus that next morning? We were at the post time and you were arguing with us that they didn't have food there. And the whole time it didn't miss me eating wings. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so look. Okay. So if you'll notice in the recipe that we put online, I talk about a pale yellow color. Yeah. Well, you can see that's kind of reaching that. We're actually cooking this a little faster than we should, but that's okay. As long as you keep this moving, guys, the absolute must with making roux and flour and fat is you gotta keep it moving because here's the thing man when that flour when that flour burns or it sits on that heat too much you're done it's gonna be this really bitter thing and what you want is when you cook this flour out is you want this beautiful nutty flavor I you smell would, it it's, it smells nutty it's, it's got this great it's got this beautiful color and this takes a few seconds Eric said you need a couple tools buddy that that whisk is looking a little the sad the whisk is busted <laughs> hey, look this ain't me man look it's Father's Day I better get oh up. my god! there better be a treasure chest of new stuff and I want to make pasta for you guys because I want to learn how to make pasta so you, they better be getting me a pasta maker what did you get me for like, <laughs> it's so sad like it's, what is that we have a cooking show we can do better <laughs> We should ask more of ourselves. All right, so we're going to keep this going. Miss Rita said, Lord, that poor whisk. Oh, Miss Rita. <laughs> you, if you only knew what I do with Miss Rita. If you only knew. Todd so right. told us that we can get one on Amazon Prime. Probably delivered tomorrow. Yeah, we probably Or can. tonight. Thanks, Todd, for reminding me of what a failure I am. I appreciate that so much, <laughs> really. It's friends like you. Dude, it's friends like you. All right. So let's go ahead and add a little milk to this. We're going to do whole milk. Okay. And to be honest with you, uh, I would put cream in this. And I just may. Matter of fact, I'm gonna grab something. Okay. So we're gonna do a little heavy cream. All right. We want this. We want this cheese sauce. Remember, Dad. It's Dad. It's Father's Day. So as we add cold milk. Okay. We're gonna keep it moving. Add a little time. You see what it's doing? Thickening yeah. up already. Yeah. Well, the reason we're keeping it moving like that is what? What do we not want in this? We don't want it to burn. We don't want lumps. No lumps. We don't want lumps. That's thickening right up. See how quickly that does that? Yeah. Look at you, you're going crazy with that broke oh ass my whisk. God. We're gonna have to have a small <laughs> commercial here in a minute. Because it's Jim. Feels like He's he, gonna get a little tired. Look, my legs are already tired from crack a towel. I'm gonna be dead honest with you. Uh, Universal put a hurting on me. Hey, what kind of wine are we drinking? They joined late. It's at Kendall Jackson, it's their estate. You can get it at Teddy It's Jackson Jones. Estate, right? Jackson Estate. Yeah, yeah I think so. So if you remember again with the, with the uh, recipe, I said, hey, you know, so much milk, like two cups. Yeah. Man, this may be more. What, what you're looking for is the consistency of the sauce. Okay. If you look here. Hey, Rick said that if you add warm milk, it won't clump as much. I, it will, he's absolutely right. Okay. Got me. I didn't add warm milk. <laughs> I just stirred too hard. Right. Oh, that looks good. Not bad. Yeah. But you gotta remember, it's gonna cook out some more because we just raised the heat up a little bit. And you can still feel it's resisting pretty good. I want it to bubble up because it's actually going to clabber. That's okay. a clabber. It's going to uh, it's going to bind up a little bit more. Once okay. It starts boiling. Okay. So once that happens, we're going to hit it with like a cup and a half or a cup or so of Parmesan cheese. I like Parm because it's sharp. If you're using cheddar, use either extra sharp white cheddar. Um, because I like these potatoes to be white when they char. They have a great look on the plate, and it gives you some good contrast from the what we're going to do with the greens and. With the steak. Mike said, um, well, Kathy said, you're not too bougie, bougie for that whisk. <laughs> I'm not too bougie. Well, listen, are we bougie people, baby? We are not bougie <laughs> at all. We're and then Mike said, y'all need to have a talk with your budgeting department about better equipment. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, listen, Mike. All, all of these things are correct. Now, we're, we're not arguing any of this. From over here. This is a bones show. We've talked about it before. This is real. Like, when none of my stuff worked and my crab cakes wouldn't bind together... Like, we're like, this is straight up it's real okay. You sold it, baby. You sold it. You okay. sold the sizzle. Thanks, baby. <laughs> Hold on. I have to get some more. I gotta be careful. That cab is great. Oof. Mm -hmm. See, it's already thickening up a little bit more. See, come around and get a point away from the bottom. They want to know how the tools are going to look after we get through that bottle of wine. Ooh. See how I can pull it apart and have oh, it Oh, yeah. Up? So that means it's going to cook up a little bit more. And believe it or not, a little bit of flour gives you a lot of sauce. Okay. A little bit more than a half a stick of butter. We're going to go ahead and add the rest of this milk. Okay. How much is how much milk is that? You said uh, two cups. 16 ounces. That's, a yeah, pint. That, that's, yeah, 16 ounces. That's two yeah. cups. But we're still getting, it's still a little thick. But that's fine. I don't care. I want it to get, I'm going to add some cream. Because I want it really creamy when I hit it with that parm. 
uh, that Parmesan cheese. So that was probably about two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. Okay. Look, your heart's not gonna like us. Let's just get that out of the way. Roy yeah. said your hair looks good. Well, why you, can I ask you a question? Why would you read that? See, here's because it makes me giggle. It makes me giggle so much. You have an option to not read that. And you shouldn't do that because I'm your husband and you should hold me up. Uh, they, they said, uh, Danny said you're the OG and you're an inspiration. <laughs> Your bar needs to go up, buddy. <laughs> Bad news, though. All right, so. They want to know how we keep Dexter out. We actually just had to put Dexter outside of the pool area because he was He's barking. He's a menace, dude. He is a menace. He's not a menace. He is a menace, and you know he is. He's just a good watchdog, I added honey. One more, um, one more tablespoon of heavy cream. Okay. Got about a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of salt. That's a by-taste thing. And remember that... That parm has this beautiful nutty flavor. So we're already gonna have some really, 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 really good uh, flavor in there. Plus this is a nice heavy kind of sauce. It's gonna cook. It's gonna... <laughs> well, come on, man. They said, because your whisk, your whisk is on my lips. Okay, look, <laughs> your hand, if you have a hand the size of a medium sized man, yep. who got ignored for obvious reasons, uh, that's about a half a cup. We're gonna do about a cup. What type of cheese is that this again? This is uh, fresh grated parm or parmesan. I'm oh, okay. Okay. This is really good quality parmesan. Yeah. We're gonna stir this in. It's kind of like almost kind of sort of like a down frito. We're gonna melt this completely through. Look here. You are going to town with that whisk, babe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, I need some more liquid there. Do you want me to stir? Yeah, you can. I, I would like better equipment, sir. What? I would like some better equipment. There you go. All right. <laughs> You're terrible at this. I know. Wait. Why did you say that? Just joking. All right. Uh, Mark's daughter is a fourth year culinary student in high school, and she loves our show. Oh, tell her thank you. Mm. Thank you, Mark. Don't uh, put your finger in there. Don't don't do that. Uh, if you're cooking for anybody else, don't put your finger in. He's only cooking for me, so it's fine. Who needs a little bit more salt, then we're going. Okay. okay. Mm, so, okay. So. So what are what are we doing next? Well, I'm gonna put these in here, in this uh, pan. Okay. Potatoes in here first, because I want to be able to layer them. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and take a. This is a peeled yellow onion. Okay. Okay. Are you gonna use that fine piece of equipment we again? We are gonna go right. really thin. Okay. Really thin. We love these cheats, though. We do, because it saves time. It does save time. We find ourselves sometimes going into a second hour, and we don't want to bore you guys to right. tears. Right. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Oh, that looks good. Okay. Good so, job. We're going to layer our potatoes. Okay. And, and, and what I said in the recipe is you layer them around overlapping each other on the bottom. <laughs> whisk, the, whisk it good. Oh, come on. Is that what's going to be the rest of the night? Oh, my God, I can't as, wait. As I'm trying to cook. It entertains me. Well, baby, listen, this ain't about entertaining you. It is. We're trying so. to inform people how to make great food for themselves, aren't but, we? But we are, but we're having fun. Okay, are we doing so that? So much okay. fun. Okay. okay, so. Was it only milk in the cheese sauce? Uh, or was little, there broth? heavy whipping cream? No, no broth. No broth. No okay. Broth. So we're going to do a layer, a layer of onion. Oh, really thin, like your hairline. Right. They got jokes, oh, honey. Oh, they got jokes. <laughs> They're so clever. Okay, so we did a layer of potatoes, and then we did a layer of onions. And I'll do a little salt in between. Okay. We're adding some salt in a little, between. A little salt in between. And it's just kind of like a game. You know, I want to say something, you know. I was thinking about this this afternoon. Uh, you know, cooking is just one of those things that has always been a lot to me. In our family, it's, it's kind of always been that way. This has, like, been a gathering place. What you're seeing now is just a time warp of what we were doing as a family not even four years ago when all my kids were home. Yep. This is what we would do. Everybody would sit around. I would make dinner. Tori would drink herself into a small a coma. Oh my gosh. I and did then, not. And then while doing so, we would talk to our kids. And the beautiful thing about this is, is you guys who are parents out there, you know this. You know, when your kids become not disarmed, let's don't say that. Let's just say disarmed. Well, listen, what is on, happening? Hold on, stop for a second. <laughs> You know as good as well as I do, you've used the time that we've spent in the kitchen a lot of times to you know, learn stuff about the kids' lives and stuff. They, you know, they, they just start talking, and parents need to stay informed about what's going on in their lives. And we find that in the kitchen, they kind of let them, let their, you know, we just kind of talk and we hang out. And next well, they talked know, a lot more when you left the room. Did they really? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> oh yeah, buddy. Terrified. I got the secrets. Terrified of me. That's fine. I'm fine. Jimmy's fast dad and the potatoes all rotten. I am fast dad. It's obviously. a visual zen. I'm fast tied. Okay, so. Yep. Boom, right? So yeah. Two layers of onions, two layers of that. We're going to a little salt. All right. And we have now, we have our. Fish and mouth. Oh, look at this. Look how pretty this one looks. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. Look at that. Look how much difference that is. Oh my God. How it, awesome it, is that? We're going to hit a little bit more. It milk. looks sweet. So we want to thin it out a little bit. I got a sweet tooth. Look at that. Look how beautiful and, and it is. creamy that looks, right? It's awesome. And all that with a horrible whisk. Look at that. That's a quarter cup of flour making all that sauce, dude. By the way, if you, you ever wonder where macaroni and cheese comes from. Yeah, that's like, the base. Throw two cups of parm in this, right, yeah. once you make the sauce. Okay. And then like two cups of sharp white cheddar and a cup of like sharp yellow cheddar to give the color. Yeah. Pour that over boiled macaroni noodles and throw it in the oven. There wow. you go. Beautiful okay. baked macaroni and cheese. This is the basis for all these three things. So, horrible boy scout. Okay. Bechamel. Ooh, cheese wait. sauce. Yum. Check that out. That looks this is, is this insane. This is kind of food porn. It is. It is. It got a little slow. <laughs> it got a little yeah. quiet. I feel like there should be some Isaac Hayes playing or something like that. Now. So you wanna, I want to kind of shake that up a little bit. Yeah. Because I want that to settle a little bit. I want to get it on. I should have put, I could have put it in the layers. Yeah. And we'll do that. But I like it like this. You're just kind of making sure it gets down yeah, there. I just want to make sure it gets in all the layers. And we're, we're out of sauce. So we did it right. Okay. And uh, spray a little water in your pan if you make the sauce. It, it can be like a... Uh, It'll get stuck, right? Oh my God. It'll be like a... It's going to be like... Uh, uh, they said do us all a favor and uh, retire that whisk. Oh. So, potatoes in. Yeah. Those, those are going to be a lot. Okay. So, let's take a little time. Clean up. Um, braised kale. Braised Actually, kale. Actually, let's get our demi-gloss started. Okay, that's really what we need to do. Because that's going to take the most time to cook. Okay. So, our demi is going to be... Mm -hmm. Demi-gloss. What is demi-gloss? Demi-gloss is highly reduced beef bones and the mirepoix plus garlic. Mirepoix is... Mirepoix? What's the mirepoix? What's a mirepoix? And okay, the mirepoix is celery. Okay. Carrots. Okay. Onion. Oh my gosh. So about carrots. <laughs> you know, this I is bothering me. I heard. This is bothering me. Oh, okay. People Tell started me. creating baby carrots, which aren't really baby carrots, uh, because people didn't want to buy ugly vegetables. Right, because the aesthetic value of the baby carrot is so much cuter. Oh my god. We throw away like 60%. Of our vegetables. Isn't that crazy? It's insane. My guys, you know, I got some uh, friends up in Hastings, Florida, which is up near Palak, where I'm from, and uh, and they're great people, and they, uh, they're cabbage farmers, and you know, I tell stories about, as a kid, this is 100% true, like as a kid, I used to go with my uncles and my grandmother out to the potato fields of Hastings, because, you know, we grew up humbly, you know, and uh, when we wanted free veggies, like exactly what Tori's saying, like these farmers would, would till these potatoes up, and... If the potato had a mark in it from the tiller, like if it cut it, they would put it in the corner of a field. And as big as my kitchen, there'd be a, I mean. And just let it like rot? A, like a 15-yard dumpster full of, of uh, potatoes because they weren't aesthetically pretty. Really, for lack of a better word, that's exactly what it is. So we have a hot saucepan. You don't need to move. Okay, I'm not. Olive oil in. That's probably going to be about three tablespoons, maybe up to a quarter cup. We're going to do these onions. This okay. two. Oh, well, this should be like hot. What's going on? Okay, that's two uh, yellow onions, and okay. you, you can see I just I just I cut them kind of root, just chopped. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay. This is uh, just organic celery. I bought organic because we like to buy organic food. We just find they have better flavors. So we want to do about a cup. I, I noticed when you when you make this, you want the ratio to be about like when it comes to your celery and onion and uh, carrot. I like two cups of onion, one cup of celery, one cup of uh, of carrots. Carrots are sweet. They get overwhelmed this. Okay. I don't want to do that. So that's probably about a half a cup. I can't see exactly. So Here, it's just celery. Oh, God. But still, people like to watch you chop, it's, babe. It's nothing like They like celery. watching you chop. And then the carrots. These are just regular old carrots. No big deal. I mean, I'm going to get the ends. And really, the ends don't even matter because we're straining all this off. We're only using the vegetables for the flavor to make this dimmy. That's all we're doing. 
you can see I'm chopping them up really, really, because we're going to cook this for a long time. This is going to cook pretty much the entire time we're making this meal. This is going to cook down. Randy said no Vidalia onions. No, they're too sweet. The Vidalians, I like the yellows or Spanish onions. Okay. Uh, because they're, the, the Vidalia onions are sweet. They're, I mean, that's kind of what they're known for. Um, and I don't care for them just because when they cook down, they do. They get sweet. Now, they're perfect for that little thing we are talking about um, in one of the earlier episodes where if you take a sweet Vidalia onion, mm -hmm. yeah. peel it, <clears throat> yeah. take your knife and go down, 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 like six cuts. Like right. That. Like a kind of, blooming onion. Yeah, yeah. You feather it apart. Okay. Sprinkle beef bouillon or some of this cool stuff in here, which we're going to tell you about in a little bit. And then some cubed butter in there. Throw it in the oven for like 45 minutes. Man, that's hard to beat. Yeah. I, mean, I could have done that tonight. Right. Truthfully, I could have done that tonight for this, but I didn't want everything to be in the oven. I want to be able to do some stuff on the stove top. Um, what do we got going on tomorrow night? And what are we giving away? I'm so excited. Oh, we get to plan what we're going to give it away for. So tomorrow night, uh, it's uh, Primetime Kitchen Live or BTK Live. We're going to be at Marlowe's at Lee Vista. It's out by the airport. Really easy to get to, honestly. If you're coming from the coast, 528 literally drops you off in the parking lot of this restaurant. Mm -hmm. Cool. Of course, you know, we have a great history with Marlowe's. A little boutique chain uh, with like four locations in Orlando. We've had great success with Marlowe's brand in Orlando. Yeah. Um, and this one is kind of newer. And the chef is really... This is, the, this is the chef that creates the dishes for the entire... A chain who okay. made these pairings for for us tonight. Of course, Goose Island Beers have been a great, great partner with this show. We're pairing their beers up, and we're giving away a. I just talked to Frank Wassey, like one of the greatest, my man Frank, and we're going to do a ten inch chef knife, the exact one I use. Yeah. And we're going to give this away tomorrow night at that promotion. We're, we're going to do it somehow, so you have a good chance of winning. So our onions are cooking up real nice. Okay. And it, and maybe somebody saw me throw a little bit of butter in there. Here's the beef. This is what we're cooking tonight. What's that? They asked oh, yeah. what we're cooking tonight. So we're doing New York strips. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to do a little flavor for Tori, but you can see those strips have that beautiful marbling. It's exactly what we want. We're going to create that great crisp crust that you want in your steak, but we're going to finish it in the oven perfectly medium rare, okay? And actually, to be honest with you, I like mine a little more done than medium rare. I like right, mine more right. between medium and medium rare lately. Um, and uh, it's just a flavor thing for me. We have a great fat cap on this meat, which I love because that's what I love to sear in the pan. Yeah. And uh, we're going to do some braised kale. We're going to get that kale going in one second. The good thing about the kale is once you get it going, it can just cook. You almost can't overcook kale. So we have our onions uh, getting sauteed in this pan for our demi gloss. I call it poor man's demi because we're kind of cheating. We're going to try to make this in 40 minutes instead of literally 14 hours. Really? 14 uh, hours? It's actually longer than that. Oh my gosh. Beef bones with these veggies. You roast them in the oven on these giant trays. And then they go in these big cooking pots, cover it with water, and that cooks down by half. Mm -hmm. Then they cook that down by half. Right, then right. Then they add other beef stuff, and they cook that down by half. So your, your eight gallons of stock turn into like a quart of demi-gloss. I mean, it's ridiculous. Wilson, I can't turn it sideways because I can't get the entire depth. Like what he's... That does that every time? No, 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 no. It's a different, it's a different guy. To chill his teeth. If I turn it sideways, you won't be able to see what he's chopping. It's a thing. I've tried it. Trust okay. me. We, we work. Okay, we're working. I'm going to come over there. So celery and uh, carrot. Okay. I want to see what this looks like. By the way, there's... And the a, onion was already cooking, right? Yeah, I want to put I wanted the uh, onion a little transparent before I put all this other in. Okay, why? Uh, I don't know. I just think it tastes better. I, I want to get some of the flavor out of the onion into the oil. Okay. When this hits... And is this olive oil again? Yeah, or it's is olive this... oil. Olive oil. Oh, olive oil. you didn't use av avocado? I didn't. Okay. Uh, I'll also have some garlic here. We're going to put... Um, and the cool thing about this is I don't have to chop garlic. And my knife will stick it. If you'll sit... Can you see him? I'm just crushing this. I'm reading. I know. I'm reading the whisk. Thank God. Are they still in the whisk? Oh yeah, they're whisking you a Happy Father's Day. Uh -huh. <laughs> Whoever that is. Jimmy is such a whisk taker in the kitchen. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. It makes me laugh. Okay. I hope while cooking, I don't slip a whisk. <laughs> I hope not either, because that's when we got to get a divorce. <laughs> it, look, I told you. Don't say it. Stop. Okay. Don't talk like that. I'm, I'm not. not. <laughs> I know you're serious. Because <laughs> I know you're serious, and you will haul ass in like five seconds. I will. Don't talk mm. about me like that. <laughs> My God, that wine is so delicious. All right. Okay, so we have carrots, celery, onion, and delicious 
garlic in here, getting, right? How, how good does that smell? It smells so good. I mean, it's unbelievable. So we're gonna yep. We're gonna cook these. Uh, we're gonna cook these veggies a little bit. Okay. Not, not long. We have it on hot. Okay. And look at the onions. The cool thing. You see how transparent? They're transparent. Yeah. That's what we want. The little translucent thing we want to cook down like that. The garlic is really gonna start to fluoresce here in a second. Yeah. Yeah. And that garlic is gonna come alive. That is the miracle. Now the cool thing. Look at here for a second. So those three items plus the garlic. All right. Those three items make great, that's what the basis of great soups, great sauces, those beautiful rich flavors when you go to a restaurant, yeah. you get those really, really complex, deep, rich sauces. That's basically what this is, along with some roasted bone marrow, which we can't get tonight, but we're gonna fake it because we're gonna let these guys do all the work. We're gonna take some organic beef stock, which they did exactly what I just said. They cooked the roasted bones down with the veggies. Yep. We're just saving some time. That's why I'm calling this poor man's because we can do it on the we can do it on the stove. Oh, hey, Nova Scotia! Oh my gosh, we have Nate and we have Nova Scotia. In. Okay, cool. Halifax. So now, okay, I like for some reason I have found these herbs of Provence. No, this I'm almost going to use this bottle with. So these are really awesome, and you Ooh, can get lavender. these petties. You can see petties there. Yeah. This is this beautiful, beautiful floral color, and it goes really well with this red wine. Now, I know a lot of people might not. I made a sauce with this uh, for the guys Tom and Dan, my boys Tom and Dan, uh, with this fillets, and it was magnificent. So we're gonna add a little bit of this, uh, a little bit of this uh, herb mix. Okay. Which is probably about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. Okay. Right. It's it's so good. I mean, you know what's prevalent is the celery. Yeah, the celery. The celery, even it's overwhelming the onion. Oh yeah, it, it, but and celery garlic. Has a stick your face in that. That is insane. I know. I it can't, smells like this I can't beautiful stick. French sauce. It's so great. Mm. Okay, yes. so okay, we're gonna take Tori's Pinot Noir now. Hey, fetus. Okay, so we probably should not be doing this because this is a. This You're gonna use my Pinot Noir. Oh, I'm gonna use a little bit. Of it. <laughs> right. Well, why don't you put some in that glass behind you? <laughs> It's all the way. There you go. There you go. All right. All right. We, we should not be cooking with this. It's probably a little bit, but I don't have another uh, option. Okay. Look, when you make red sauces like this, don't use real heavy wines. Use like Pinot or Merlot or something like that. Don't use Syrah, Syrah or, or Big Cabs because it doesn't okay. cook the same and it won't give you the same flavor. So I just like cooking with these lighter reds, these more approachable reds. Yeah. So we're going to do what they call deglaze with a little red wine. Very little up front. Wait, how much was that? Half a cup. Oh, you go too fast sometimes. Oh, it's not half a cup. Okay. See that? Yep. Mm. Now smell that. I smell it. I mean, it's insane. It so, is. So what's happened is we're just de what they call deglazing. So any of the brown bits that may have been formed by the onions caramelizing on the bottom of the pan, that red wine's gonna boil it right off. Now, we immediately want this to just kind of flour a minute. Yeah. So smell it. We have super high heat. That wine's not gonna last long in there. Here's another thing about cooking with wine. You have to be careful with this, okay? This is a quart of beef stock. A quart, okay. Look how rich that is. Look at the color of that. Organic. Yeah, I mean, that's Are you that's doing the entire thing? Well, I mean, I can. Well, I'm not, like... Okay. Okay. So anyway... <laughs> I'm not challenging you. No, 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 I'm just saying, it really has to cook like that. So, um, we're going to cook this. This is going to come up to a boil. I'm going to boil this pretty rapidly for a while, because we need to cook this down. We have a show to do, and we kind of get it up. We have to get yeah. this up there. The steak's cook in no time. That's like the easiest thing we're doing tonight for real. I know that's the one and the part you really want to see, but guys, when I show you this, you are going to be so pissed that you haven't been doing this for a long time and eating beef that tastes like this for a long time. Seriously, it is going to drive you crazy. So uh, Wilson Wilson told me to tell you that David Fox said hello. Hey, no joke. Who's David Fox? David Fox uh, used to be one of my press operators when I owned the great carousel printing right there in Lockhart, <laughs> Florida for all your printing needs. Uh, Dave was a guy I've known for a long time. Great skateboarder, interesting guy. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's good to see Dave. That's awesome. Awesome. That's one of my Pine Hills boys. Pine Hills in the house. Mmm, oh. bougie. The Hodges boys are always tuning in. <laughs> hey, who, who taught you bougie? What do you mean who taught me bougie? It wasn't you. Are you taking credit for bougie? No. <laughs> I want you to say it. No, what do you mean? Say the rapper. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Lil Uzi Bird? <laughs> Why should I know that? I'm like I don't a 50-year-old honky. I don't know. Honk. I don't I know. It's embarrassing. Little, little don't. Bird. Oh, yeah. by the way, um, have you seen this? It's the brand new in lid technology. <laughs> You're doing that? Yeah, I have to. It's a little so, trashy. Anyway, it is a little trashy. A little That's trashy fine. placa. That's fine. Though. So we just want to bring the heat up for kind of quickly. Once it starts boiling, we don't have to worry about it. Okay. But I use paper plates all the time because they're a great like they're a great kitchen tool that we love to use to, yeah. to put steaks on to 
because we're going to let these rest a little bit and you're going to see exactly what we're talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and get this burner right here going real hot. Just give me a second. Can I go over there? You can. Come over. Okay, because that's where my line is. Yeah, that way we can trim up this kale because that's what we're doing next in the morning. Okay. All right, kale. 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 The hippies have ruined kale for everybody, right? No, I don't like kale. Well, it's fine. You don't have to like it, but let me tell you something. Kale is, the reason it's so good is it's beautiful bitter green. Okay. Okay. And it, <laughs> Daniel. Uh, Daniel Dennis? Yes. Well, why, why is he doing that? No, I can't. I can't. Why is he doing that? Don't tell him not. What's he doing? Okay. See, <laughs> see the stalk? Okay. Well, that's tough and we don't want it. So we're going to, we're going to take this and we're going to run that down. Wait, I can't see. Okay. okay. And we're going to take the stalk out. Now, some, actually, I've cooked it with a stalk before, and I don't mind it. I really Our, don't. Caitlin doesn't mind it. Yeah, my, my daughter loves it because it's real crunchy. Yeah. But this is easy. Just lay it this way down. Take your knife. Get a sharp knife. Run it right up the stalk. Okay. Right up the stalk. Trim the end. That way you can keep that. And look, if I was... When you make vegetable stock, guys, that's great. I'm, I'm glad you get to see this. Do you see me cut the tips of onions? He you see throws me? it in the pot. This is in my Rachel Ray bowl. But, <laughs> but let me tell you something. Uh, you make vegetable stock as well. So you, all these veggies, like what we're doing here, what you saw here. Yeah. If you're going to make vegetable stock and freeze it, which you can do. And again, when you're making sauces, if you have somebody who wants like, you don't want to be for a chicken type profile. Right. Just roast all that down and then cover it in water and cook it. Yeah. And it cooks down to the vegetables become like really nothing. Strain that off and you have a great delicious vegetable stock to make soups with. Yeah. And yeah. stuff like that. So that's why we keep a bowl like that because you can put it in a bag like a, a, a gallon Ziploc bag and throw it in the freezer until you have enough and then make some stock. Okay. Because there's no work involved. Get a big pot going, heat it up, put some oil in there, saute it until it cooks a little bit, cover it in water and let it cook down. You're not doing anything, but you're increasing the flavor you're off, you offer in your kitchen throughout the, the rest of the week or even longer. Daniel wants to know about that knife for people that need better knives. Um, so, sh now, I have a couple, I have Hinkle knives. Okay. If you'll notice, I'm not using my Hinkle knife, and it's not because it's not a bad knife. I just find this. It's not because it is a bad knife. No, 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 not at all. Hinkle's a legendary knife making company, along with Gustav, and, and there are a number of others, you know, single makers. Shun is a maker out of Japan, and you can see I am literally the weight of the knife is cooking. It's cutting dragging this. across, it's, and, and. Look, it's just. I mean, yeah. Now it's just kale, of course. I'm not cutting uh, PVC pipe by any means, but I mean. <laughs> you but, shouldn't cut PVC pipe with your Shun knife. Correct? I'm going to agree with Tori on that. All right. Look, I know go something. Out on a limb. Tori, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say, <laughs> by not using your knife, your $180 cooking knife to to cut uh, PVC pipe is a good decision. Uh, this is one much kale. Now, this looks like a, a lot of kale. <laughs> they said you should have used that knife to whisk. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. <laughs> I can't thank my wife enough for helping out the delinquents that are It makes me laugh life. so hard. And look, honey. That has value somewhere, and I appreciate that. It really does. So, <clears throat> hey, Jason shut chopped off to watch us. What's that? He was watching Chopped, and he oh. shut it off to watch us. Oh my god! You took the opportunity to got to uh, not watch a guy who owns a taqueria in El Paso <laughs> to cook steak <laughs> for three guys who make noodles. Hey, thanks. So we like to eat Parmesan cheese. So I'll put a, a block of parm on our table all the time. I mean, Tori and I love to eat shaved parm. Love and it. And drink wine. It's so good. While I'm cooking. Okay, so Tori, you want to come over? Yeah. Tori? Daniel said you shouldn't cut PVC with that knife. <laughs> Tell Daniel I can't thank him enough for tuning in and offering his puns. Okay, look at that. See all that beautiful, rich brown color? Yep. We're not even close. Okay. So these veggies are going to cook. We're going to reduce, reduce this by at least half. Okay. Now, a couple magical things we haven't added yet. This stuff right here. What is this? Okay. Let me see. Hold on. This is better than beef bouillon. I actually even put it on the recipe. Here's why this is important. Two things you want to you watch. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, this is, again, reduced beef stock. Uh, it has a lot of salt in it, so I have to be very careful. But what this does, this is one of the magical things I use for that chili that I've won a lot of uh, contests with. This is one of the this is one of the secret ingredients, guys. I'll be <gasps> honest with you. you did it. I did it. This reacts so well with um, with the chipotle peppers. You just simply can't even imagine the flavor you get out of that. And really, that base, this base with chipotle peppers and a couple other things I've added, some red wine uh, syrup, coffee. Didn't you? No do coffee, coffee to that now. Oh. 
but that's what makes that chili taste so good and rich and beautiful and deep. You get this beautiful, rich complex that's on your palate for a long time. This is it. So what we're going to do is we're going to cheat a little bit more. Okay. So we're making, we like cheating because well, cheating tastes well, good. No, but here's the thing. But it does. And this is why we're calling this poor man's demi gloss. Look at that. We're, going make, we're going to make a real fancy thing, but we're that's about a, you know. What is that? Probably about a, a little bit more than a teaspoon. Okay. Okay. And if you'll notice, I did not salt this. You guys did not see me put anything other than the herbs in the reason Is that why? because of the broth? That's because that stuff, the beef bouillon that I just put in the back, oh, has, has salt. Okay. So you have to be very careful. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in now. And I'm not going to salt or do anything else until that reduces by half. Okay? Now, that's going to be a one. Okay. Look at those potatoes already. Look oh, at this let me see. Look let me see. Beautiful color I'm getting already. <clears throat> potatoes. Yum. You can already smell them. Look at that. Now, that, that beautiful brown color is yeah. going to cover the top of that. And what I like to do, which we probably won't get to do tonight because we're probably going to run out of time. We'll see how it goes. Because when I get those potatoes done, I usually would have cooked that way in advance. Right. And let them cool because they're going to be just, just so hot in the middle for a long time after we pull them out. Yeah. I like to take a, um, you can take it, if you don't have a, a punch to make like a round mold with, Take a can of soup you haven't eaten or old green beans or whatever and take your can opener and do it on both sides. Okay, okay. And then peel the label off. And that actually acts as a really good punch. So I want to make, I wanted to make kind of like a medallion, like a little tower yeah. with these potatoes. But I don't know that I'm going to be able to do that. So we'll see how it goes because I wanted to plate it a cool way. Some people are just joining. Can you go through what you're making? Yeah. So we're making tonight, we're going to do, this is Father's Day dinner. Okay, yeah. so we have some beautiful New York strip steaks. The little filet is for my beautiful wife. That's for me. But if you're gonna make a dinner for your pop, this these came from Petty's Meats in Longwood. They've been a great time, a great sponsor of, um, of a meat of the week for many, many years. And you can grab this great beef there. You guys who are over on the coast, if you wanted to follow along tonight, you could have gone to Wasi's Meats. They also have unbelievably good products, like exceptionally good products. But you can grab one of those if you're there. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're gonna do a steak with some au gratin potatoes, which we have in the oven right now. And we're gonna do a little braised kale, because kale gets a bad rap, and I don't like that. And I think this is gonna offer a really good color and texture. Okay. No, because it's bitter. Yep. And it has a little bit of vinegar in it, a little bit of red onion in it. All right, so we just kinda of wanna give this a rough chop. Okay. But you can see I'm not really doing a lot to it. It looks like a lot. It is, but it's not. It isn't? No. Okay. This cooks down a lot, and it's gonna wind up being probably about I don't know, probably two or three cups when it's all said and done. Daniel thinks that we should totally get married because we're so good together. Oh, I'll tell Daniel thank you so much. I think. <laughs> I have to check my records, but I think maybe we did that. Mm, I, know if I, I, don't know. Let, I don't know. Let, I don't let, know. Oh, let me reflect. If I remember right, it was you and your boyfriend, Thomas, who ran up my wedding bill at the reception of the alcohol? Oh yeah, to around thirty-seven hundred dollars. <laughs> That's a true that story. Is, that makes you a bad person. That is you a true and your story. boyfriend, Tom, ran my <laughs> damn alcohol bill up at the most special moment in my life to thirty-seven hundred dollars. How do you feel about that? You should feel bad about that. <laughs> I hope you do. I do. I, I sincerely hope that you have some massive. Guilt? Emotional regret. Guilt? I do. Okay, so. Did we have a shotgun wedding? No. That's Somebody asked. Had, Somebody asked. Tori's had a beautiful wedding. Tori could make a living doing, uh, planning weddings. We did the, the most beautiful wedding you ever saw in your life for 10 grand. Daniel said the number seems to be getting higher right, and higher. 3,700, you <laughs> bastard, you know it. Trust me. My mom had to pay My the bill. My mother had to write that check, you awful. <laughs> and then I had to write her a check once we came back yeah. from Vegas because we are not bougie and we went to Vegas on our honeymoon. <laughs> That's a Tori, true story? Story. <laughs> you can make it sound better than that. <laughs> no, babe, we did. We went honey, to Vegas. Honey, we got a free condo. <laughs> we did. <laughs> it had a fireplace. It did. In Vegas. <laughs> you know, where it's 140 year round. Oh, man. Okay. All right, so. <clears throat> oh, but we had the best singer ever. Melissa's on here. Oh, yeah. Melissa is. Hey, what's up? What's up? Up in Minnesota. Yeah, she is. Okay, so yep. red onion. If you'll notice, that's a little big for that, but we could probably get away with it. Okay. See that? Let's do that. Oh, that looks. You're cutting that super thin, right? Yes. And we. That's... What are you using the red onion for? What's the flavor for? This is going to be in our kale. Okay. Okay. So we have a pan warm. Oh, we're gonna get this pan nice and hot. 
And then we're gonna take this red onion, we're gonna saute it. God, look how beautiful it is. Almost like it's almost like spaghetti, right? Nice and thin. Beautiful. Yeah, that's good. That's one of those mandolins, man. This is the best money you can spend. Okay. It's one of those shavers, like one of those mandolins where it has where you can get the thickness. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do like uh, it, it, it goes down like where you can make your in-house potato chips. Yeah. Like kettle chips are the oh, best. They oh, they are so good. The best to make it. They home. are. Mm-hmm. So our sauce is reducing. We're making our poor man's demi gloss. Yep. That's reducing with our beef stock and our vegetables and our herbs. So that's doing great. We have a pan warming up right now. We're going to make our kale and get that going. Okay. And the great thing about the kale is this, guys. This is a pretty tough green. It's pretty resilient, man. This is, you know, this is a this is a no joke green. Yeah. So you got to cook it a little bit. The great thing about kale is our potatoes are going to take a like half an hour, forty minutes, or whatever. Once this kale goes on and it's cooking out and it's braising, which is basically what we're going to do, we're going to saute it with the onion. Okay. We're going to toss it in oil. We're going to wilt it. And you'll see the vegetable, the actual leaf will wilt down like spinach does when you cook it, right? And once that wilts down, we're going to hit it with some chicken stock and then we're going to cover it. And we're going to let it basically steam and boil in itself. And it's going to tender this vegetable up a lot. It's going to be beautiful. And if you see how we're going to plate this, kale is not going to be one of those things that's really super present on the plate. Right. The steak and the potatoes are always the stars of the show when you're making like a Father's Day gift. And plus we're going to do a little mushroom in this. So you'll see when we plate this up tonight, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. The kale is just an enhancer. It's just a little bit of bitter to separate that beautiful savory of our steak and our beef fat and our beautiful cheesy potatoes. This bitter is going to be a welcome, welcome bitter. Trust me. And it's going to be a little bit tangy from the red, red wine vinegar. Earl said um, he's first timer. He wants to know who the lady is behind the camera. That's my wife. Flip the camera. Flip it. Hold on. I just found this button. Hey. Okay. That's my beautiful Tori. Um, and then Daniel wants to know, it, Andrea actually wants to know if I have partaken a little too much wine. Uh, Maybe, uh, perhaps. Hey, can I tell you, how about for the uh, fourth time this week? <laughs> Uh, has consumed way too much wine. It's only meeting, it's only Tuesday, buddy. At a business Come now. Meeting yesterday. We did, and the day before. <laughs> and listen, when you're drinking Mexican restaurant wine, oh, like, it's so bad. The glass, they fill it to the rim, though. <laughs> well, you know why? Because like, it's it. cheap. Because it spoils like crazy. Because they're not. Thanks, fine. Joanne. Okay, a little bit of olive oil. You want know, to come over? Oh, come over. hold on, babe. I gotta. All right, let's go. You got a good hot pan. Yep. Probably two tablespoons or so. Okay. We want to coat the bottom. You can see how we have a nice coat on the bottom there. Yeah. All right. So oh, let's look at this while you're doing that. Look. So we don't put a lid on the demigloss? No. We want, oh. we want that to cook out. We want all that water to go. Okay. 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 So we have our onion in. Oh, Ben's wife is going to make this for him. Who's Ben? Ben Locke. Oh. I don't know. Awesome. Well, congrats, Dan. I hope she does a good job. It's pretty. It's an easy little dish. Uh, yeah. Miss Rita said there's no such thing as too much wine. Yeah, you're right, you're I would right. agree, Miss Rita. You're I had, right. I had to stop. I, I get red wine drunk. Oh, uh, and I'll start pumping the dishwasher. <laughs> <too, so. laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy loves yeah. everybody when he gets red wine drunk. It is not. It is not conducive to a positive marriage. <laughs> it is not. Baby, it is not. Well, he right. he follows direction when I tell him to get in the Uber and go home. He does. Jim does. Do I just third person Alright, so we, uh, you don't need to try and look at this. I'm just, okay. just going to chop up a couple of cloves of garlic. Alright, well, I'm going to sit here and look at this onion. I'm going to sit here and stir it. Thank you, baby. Appreciate hey, you're welcome. It's a team effort. It is a team effort. So. Alright, so a couple of cloves of garlic in. Yep. And we, look, we, we want the onions to cook a little bit. We want to just break this garlic down a little bit. Not a lot, because here's the thing. It's going to continue to cook with the kale. Yeah. And a lot of guys are like, you put the garlic in too early. I didn't. I've never, I've never bittered garlic like that. Yeah. All. That's all about the cooking uh, process. So it really doesn't take long. You really only cook this garlic. You Really, you're just kind of making it for us. You can smell it, my God. Oh, my God. Sean is literally sitting in the rain at his stepdaughter's softball practice watching us. <laughs> well, Sorry, Sean. Man. Sean, I've done this in volleyball. For years, five years of volleyball. You're a horrible father, Sean. What are you making? Garrett wants to know. We're making some New York strips, pan seared New York strips. We're going to do some uh, braised kale and some au gratin potatoes with uh, Parmesan cheese and poor man's demi gloss as a finishing sauce with some white mushrooms. That's it. Hey, Kenny wants to know why you don't put a cover on the demi. 
Uh, because I want all that water to cook out. I mean, yeah. it's the whole idea of doing this. You want it thick, right? We want that water to cook out. We're reducing this beef stock, which is basically flavored okay. water, guys. It yeah, really is. it is. So we're going to cook that down. Imagine it this way. So if you cooked a Pepsi or a Coke down, you'd wind up with syrup. Yep. That's the same exact theory. Yep. We're cooking this down to that beautiful, pure beef broth that turns into this beautiful, glazy type, really super rich and deep. So what's oh. your favorite cut of steak? Actually, lately, I like bone-in ribeyes, guys. Why? Uh, lots of fat. Lots of fat. Lots of fat. Maybe it's that simple. Okay, so we did put our kale in. You did? Okay. And what's going to happen is... It's going to shrink. It's going to shrink a lot. So, we don't mind. We turn it. We let it cook for a minute. We turn it over. Okay. And that oil hits it. You may have to add a little bit more oil. Usually not. It's going to fall out of your pan. Don't freak out. It's just, it's just cooking kale. Everybody cooks it knows. What wine would you pair with this meal? A uh, nice dark cab. Okay. Is what I'm drinking tonight. Um, uh, you can get away with a, a spicy red as well because we're gonna have a, some. We're gonna have a little spice in this because this is gonna have some red chili flake in there. So a little spice, uh, petite syrah would go nice with it maybe. Okay. Um, even your pinot noir is uh, you know it's kind of juicy and uh, and you know really lighter. But you know what? Your fillet is a really lean piece of meat. Because we are going to do a filet tonight. Okay, okay. So your filet is going to do well with that, that real kind of milder wine. Okay. The cab cuts through that fat. Okay, and just, the filet doesn't have as much. And the filet didn't have hardly any fat, so. Is the, that bacon in the kale, or what is that in the no, kale? this is red onion okay. and garlic. Now, you can put bacon in this for sure. Give you that great smoky flavor. You can also achieve that with smoked paprika. Smoked paprika but, but is not, the best. Is the, if you don't have smoked paprika in your uh, in your spice closet or your spice cabinet or whatever, yep. you should get some because it's pretty magical. It does a lot of cool stuff. I don't even know what I'm doing and I use spice paprika whenever I'm making <laughs> sweet, um, potato. sweet potato chips. They, it's the best. You yeah. put a little bit of olive oil, some garlic, salt, some pepper. salt, pepper, sweet pa um I'm sorry, smoked paprika, and it is so good. It is good. We make it for, matter of fact, we just made it the other night for snacks. Hey, Jason, the recipe is going to be on ptkradio.com, or it, or you can find it on our Facebook page where you're at. So, we're gonna look at, so now, as you can see, even this big bulk that we've only worked with this for like 30 seconds, yeah. you can see it's, it's cooked way down. Yeah, it's cooking down so, and a we're lot. Hot. Okay. So this, this pan is really hot. I mean, it is smoking hot. You're going to see in a second when we add this chicken stock to it, and by the way, this is a great vegetarian dish. If you guys are vegetarian, just use vegetable stock. Don't use chicken stock, okay? Are you marinating the steak? No. No, no I'm marination. Sorry. Somebody asked me, Mark, Mark Bishop. He said, are you marinating the steak? Yeah. Don't come at me, bro. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> I don't mind that. I guess, you know, back to... Hey, they want to know how far in advance we we uh, uh, set up the meals. We plan the meals. Um, well, <laughs> a day? Is, that, no, 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 hold on. <laughs> Well, today, because it's Day, Father's yeah. Day, but typically, I don't know. Like, like, well, they some of them have decided the day of. Be up with it. Yeah. Like the week that we did, um, was it Seth Pork Chops or was it last week? It was last week it was because we were going to do yeah enchiladas. And I kind of bailed on that Thank because it's a, I mean it's kind of easy, but it I don't know it just didn't have enough steps where I thought it was kind of a cool learning thing. Hey, Kenneth said, is there any good ribeye recipes? Not trying to bother us, but no, he no, does no. want to find one for 4th of July. Uh, like, any of these would be great with ribeye. I mean, steak is steak. I mean, ribeye just has more fat. New York strip has that great marbling with a fat cap. Yep. Bone in ribeye has the bone, which I, you know, again, filet is just a, a piece that doesn't have a whole lot of fat on it, right? Yes. And then you have, um, and then you have sirloin. Now, sirloin doesn't have as much fat. Of course, it's not, a, it's not one of the, the major loin parts that you want to get where you're going to get a super tender steak. But what can I tell you? I can cook a sirloin steak and you'd want to eat it because I can make it to the point just by technique. You can take a an, an inferior. So meat, sirloin is considered like inferior. Well, okay. It's not like filet or rib or, or strip or anything like that. But you can take those those cuts of meat and make some pretty special stuff with it, guys. You really can. It's just technique, really. Okay, let's hit this with some chicken stuff. What do you say? Okay. All right. I'm down. You just used a lot of it huh? in the Jimmy. Okay. That's beef. Chicken stock. That's a cup and a half. Okay. Now. <laughs> they said first the broken whisk or the busted whisk, and then they noticed that our fence needs to be repainted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're great. Tom, thank you so much. 
Tell them at any point, I'll be glad to come over to their house and do some filming to make sure they're up to par aesthetically on their property. I'd love to do that. Just, to, just tell them to start sending addresses. I'll slide over tomorrow. Oh, uh, oh yeah, here's the other thing, guys. With this, you can see, see how that's simmering? Yep. Now, we have a really super hot pan, and it's going to simmer like that, all right? Okay. So let me slide in here real quick. Somebody calm down. Yep. I'm going to go in for a really, really... Um, so Garrett, we put the red onion, we put chicken stock, and garlic. Did we put garlic in there? Yeah, so first what you do is cut a couple tablespoons of olive oil, saute uh, half of a thinly sliced red onion. Okay. Saute that for like five minutes. Two or three cloves of uh, chopped garlic, saute that for about a minute. Okay. Kale in. Yep. Right? So yep. turn the kale until it wilts. Once okay. it wilts, this is all on high. Yep. High temperature. Add two cups of chicken stock and... Steam. Cover because that steams it, right? So basically, it's boiling, and you'll get this. You'll see this in a minute. It's going to start doing this, and it's going to start breaking that kale down. And the cool thing is, now I can forget this kale. It's done. I can forget it. Hey, Steve White's on. Hey, hey, Stevie. Hey, Steve. He just went on vacation. I hope he had a good time. He's out west. Yeah. Area here. In my razor bowl. Why do you keep calling it the Rachel Ray Bowl? Rachel Ray started that whole thing of having a big stainless steel bowl and she would put all of her... Do you know where Rachel Ray started out at? I don't. Howard Johnson as a line cook. Did she really? I mean... Isn't that interesting? Look, we had... Um, so, I don't know if you guys heard the show on uh, Primetime Kitchen, the show with Chef... Uh, with Theo from The Willow Tree. But the cool thing about Theo is... I don't know if you heard the story. So, Dory saw by him starting like as a, her starting as a line cook. Yeah. Of course, Theo isn't Rachel Ray, but mm -hmm. let's face it, who is? <laughs> um, so, with that, e said, with that said, Theo lived in a butcher shop, like in an apartment above his parents' butcher shop at 12. And he tells this great story about the brewers over in Germany paying him to climb through the spout where the vats, the cooking vats, open up to clean the vats and they would pay him with beer at 12 years old and the best part is his grandfather would take half of that crazy crazy stuff let's check our potatoes real quick let's look at them okay <gasps> mm, don't let that close on me that's right okay so those potatoes are bubbling yep and this is a 375 we've noticed i put it on the lower rack I, I we did i it's time now i could cover this with tinfoil and cook them through and then open it up yep and just kind of broil the top or like that from the bottom rack it would give me the color. I don't like doing that. I want it to achieve that brown color by cooking over time. So that's going to be a bubbly goodness. And the creamy potatoes are going to be great with a super rich steak. Yep. So our kale is cooking. And this is, and the good thing about the kale is, the kale can just sit here and cook and cook and cook. And right. With you, I mean, I could, my daughter and I would eat this right now. Because I don't mind it like crunchy. Crunchy, super crunchy. crunchy. I like my veggies a little cooked. Cooked yeah. a lot more than you do. Now, come over here real quick. I'm sorry. I know you just okay. sat down. Okay. 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 So, this is a quart, basically, of beef stock. Now, because we have a little time, I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of this because we have some time. You'll notice when you add, and that's the guy said earlier, you know, you should warm that up. Well, a lot of times guys will do that. They'll throw it in the microwave for a few minutes or whatever. They'll warm up the stocks when they add it. They don't lose that cooking time. Of course, okay. they have to warm all that up. Right. We have it on high. It won't take long. And we're going to continue to reduce this. Look, the cool thing. Look here. See the fat? Because this organic marrow. Oh, yeah, you can so we see have that, it. the fat like from the marrow and stuff yeah. on the top. That's also a little bit of the cooking oil, but man, I'm telling you, you get that great marrow. Now, what we're going to do is when this is uh, is all done, we're going to straighten that off through a sieve. Okay. Take all the vegetables and herbs out. We're just going to have this plain brown reduction. Okay. That's going to go back in. The one thing we didn't add, I like adding it a little bit later, and some people like adding it immediately, is we're going to add a little bit of tomato paste. Now, I got this. I like this tube tomato paste. Okay, let me and see. What is that? Okay. I got this from Petty's. And the reason I like this tube, to, and try to find this, because they actually have this at grocery stores, because if you buy the cans of tomato paste, I mean, nothing ever costs, like, unless you're making red sauce, nothing costs for like a can of tomato paste. But when you start doing like short ribs, braised short ribs, and dishes like this, you only need like a tablespoon. These tubes are awesome because it doesn't go bad. So what we're going to do is... Yeah. How much about is... A, about a tablespoon. <laughs> So we're going to do about a tablespoon of this beautiful tomato paste. And what okay. that's going to do is that gonna, that's going to work really, really well, making that beautiful, rich flavor. It'll offset the sweetness of the wine because that tomato is, of course, a little acidic. Right. And it's going to give us that really, I mean, you can 
smell it immediately when you put it in there. And to be honest with you, this Demi isn't that far from being done. And that's the great thing about this poor man's Demi. And I named it poor man's because I'm just kind of cheating. Because to be honest with you, it's my, not cheating. Well, Stop on. saying it's cheating. Oh, if it uh, tastes good, it's it, not cheating. It is, you're right. So my father-in-law right. was going to come over one night, and mm -hmm. and I wanted to make him a nice steak because he's a good man. I like I like feeding, I like feeding and making him happy. Are you making? Yeah, a little, thank you. A little shape on. Uh -huh. So I was like, how can I make a dinner glass, make it fast, and not seem like I, you know, kind of buck the system? It might honestly, I, my pop would have done it. He really would have done it this. And I'm different. He would have just eaten the steak like crazy. And that's when I decided to kind of make that that quicker version using beef stock. And, and re-fortifying it with, with the uh, with the veggies, and it works out great. And it's still cooking up pretty quick. Now, we're about to do our steaks because these potatoes really aren't that far away. They're gonna give us our good brown. Our kale isn't that far away, so we want to make sure that our steaks are gonna get done right. So, first things first. They want to know what the best cookware is. Best cookware? Yep. Um, I guess that's all relative. I mean, you can spend a lot of money on cookware if you want, but um, I use a mix match. I mean, I think you should have a great, I'll tell you the things I think you should have, okay? So, uh, I think you should have a really good heavy frying pan. Okay. You can either do non-stick. Right. Non-stick's fine. And, and you need the sloped, you need the sloped curves like that. Not the one that goes up and down like that. You want it sloped so you can toss and uh, work your veggies or work your, you know, work your meal. Uh, you need at least two good saucepans. One like that size, and then a smaller one. Right. To make little sauces or whatever. And I think you need a good size cast iron skillet for sure. And then a Dutch oven. Um, <laughs> and a Dutch oven is like, you know, anywhere from four to six quarts. Because when you're braising ribs or making stews or something like that, you want to be able to start on the oven. Right. Cover it up. Or start on the stove top, cover it up, and then go into the oven to finish up. Because when you make those beautiful braised short ribs, which we'll do sometime, I'll show you how we get it started. And then I'll get one going earlier that day. And show you it is. If you ask me what my favorite thing in the world is to eat, I'm telling you guys, if you serve me braised short ribs over Parmesan risotto, are we every, having that smart night? Every day of my life, I don't know that I ever want anything different. It, I love, I love short ribs. I love them. It's er day. Is it er day? It is. Er -day. It's er day. Cheers. Um, Wayne wants to know what about ceramic or I'm sorry Mark wants to know what about ceramic Wayne wants to know best knife okay uh, my uh, magic city mayhem gave his oh. wife a Dutch oven once uh, yeah of course that's, that's <laughs> why I <laughs> uh, we use shoe knives and I do have a hinkle matter of fact let me get it right for you um, you can see it's a hinkle knife. It's still a good knife, and you can see yeah. this one's been sharpened and beaten up a lot. I've been using this a long time, and you look. I, I'll show you. This is a really good thing. Let's dig that ass. Okay, so this is a um, uh, um, a straightening steel. It's yeah. Like a sharpening steel. It's a straightening steel. Because as you cut, even though you have that edge, and you think, wow, that's really sharp. What you're actually doing when you dull your knife is you're basically bending it back and forth like that. So when you look at the knife microscopically, right. the edge isn't actually down, it's bent back and forth. So the straightening steel, you basically are just realigning the, those those pieces of metal to be one solid line. Oh, now, I see, okay. Now listen, this is the difference in metal. This is the hinkle. Can you hear that? Yeah. Listen to the shoon. Oh, it's it's lower in pitch. It's, it's a different metal altogether. This, is, this metal is way softer and it dulls easier. This metal isn't soft. You can see the hand hammered steel in there and there's different coats of steel. That's just layered, 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 layered and hammered, layered and hammered. And I just find it holds the edge longer. And that's why I like it. And really that I think that's what most cooks look for is they want to be able to hold that edge longer so they can cook for longer periods. I mean they don't have to sharpen their knives off. It's really not that I mean it's not it's not like rocket science. I mean it's just making sure that you have the right stuff at the right time. So we want to get that so we're going to get our, go ahead and get our, uh, our, our cast iron pan up to speed. Yep. Get our steaks in. So okay. Our, our potatoes aren't that far away. Oh, yeah, they're close. Okay, so let's get this going. So, New York strips. Yep. Beautiful color, fat cap, inch and a half thick. That's what I like, inch and a half thick. Matter of fact, I think I even said it in our speed. A little fillet. Yeah. Shouldn't be on the plate with this. What? That's my favorite. Shouldn't be allowed there. Why are you doing this? Because. I think you're just trying to pick on me. 
the most asked question I've ever gotten. <laughs> ever, 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 ever. Is how do you cook the best steak ever? 100%. <laughs> Here's how you do it. First things first. Yep. Why is paper towels? A minion's paper towel. Oh, great choice. <laughs> I got it at Sam's. Great choice. Are you mocking me? A little bit. Hey, Joyce Ann. Okay. We're patting our steaks off. We're going to dry, 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 dry. Why do you dry them? Because dry is going to crisp. Now, remember what we learned about... Uh, what we learned about moisture and searing. Oh, yeah, because we were doing zucchini, right? Moisture. Or, moisture. yeah. Moisture, you don't want moisture. You want to sear. Now, okay. fat loves, oh man, that thing is just raging already. John said hit him with a peace sign. <laughs> fat loves salt. Fat loves salt. Fat loves salt. Strips are salt, or fatty strip cuts in one hand. Yeah. Can you see how much salt I got there, right? Yeah. Okay. Good, good dose of salt. What kind of salt is that? This is just kosher salt. Okay. I mean, a lot of people use different kinds, and there's different science between different salts. I find kosher is good for all around cooking every day, and that's what we're going to do. These are free. We like salt. Jason Betts Emerald has uh, minion paper towels. Brett wants you to touch tips. Tip, touch. Okay. A little fillet. Do you ever dry age your steaks? Uh, you can do that at home. Actually, you can learn how to do that. I don't do that. Um, and I love dry aged beef, but it's so expensive. I mean, right, right. Look, man, I, we've talked about the bougie thing. I am, I'm not about $30 pound beef. Hey, John said he can't wait to have us at his event in September. Oh, September awesome. 8th, I think it is, yeah, that we're weekend. Gonna, we're going to be out in the popular. Yeah, it's going to be so fun. We're yeah. going to have our tent. Yep. Merchandise. We're going to have, we're gonna do, I think I'm bringing out my uh, mini egg. So we're going to make some, uh, well, I don't know what we'll do. Let's we're going to do, uh, I, I think we were talking about doing like smoke, uh, like a, um, like peaches, smoked oh, yeah, peaches. We're going to do a bunch of stuff. We'll do okay. that peach, that brulee peach. Yeah. Okay. Generous mouse cracked black pepper. Okay. Certainly on my fat cap. You need a new pepper cracker. Well, it is Father's Day. <laughs> I haven't got one for myself for a reason. I mean, you can pick up on the. Hey, what's your thoughts on using sous vide? I love it. Um. So he's great. You have to sous vide these steaks for quite a while. You have to do it in advance. But I'm, I'm actually going to start using my sous vide here pretty soon for a lot of stuff. Oh, they asked if we had Wagyu beef. We don't have, well, we don't have it here tonight. We do not. But, ain't nothing wrong with Wagyu. Vegetable oil. What? Half or a couple drops. Okay. Why do you use that instead of olive oil? Uh, it holds its heat better. Mm hmm Is that butter? Pat of butter? Oh, they said make it spicy. Do we have merchandise available? Jason wants to know. Yeah, ptkradio.com. Sorry, I have to turn it down. Ugh. Uh, ptkradio.com. Yeah. Now, should have done this earlier, but I'll go ahead and do it now because it doesn't really matter. Onion, go garlic. Ahead. Okay. Okay. Crush four or five cloves of garlic in your hand. Hey, Mark. And this should have been done earlier. Oh my God, Thomas, calm down. He's only making it for me. It's fine. What, what are you talking about? He said you didn't wash your hands enough. Oh, I do wash. I just have to wash my hands. You just don't see me walk away. The whole time I, I walk don't, away. I don't zoom in on him when he's walking away. When he's walking away, he's washing his hands. It's All boring, right. so I Where keep it on the food. And they sit these steaks in. Okay. Cast iron. Steaks away. Steaks away. Mm. Oh, they said uh, they said the uh, sarcastic comments from the show are the only reason why she watches. <laughs> look at this dimming for you. Look, look oh. how the dimming looks. Okay, I'm gonna look at the kale too. So I'm gonna pull the lid off. Look at that. Strips, yes, yes, the strips. Mmm. And of course our potatoes. And the potatoes are in the oven. Woo, that's hot. So, don't, listen, okay, focus for a sec, here we go. <laughs> don't tell me to focus. 
Why did I say that? I don't know. Focus. Hey, if you notice, I didn't, I didn't move the steaks. I shook them one time. After I put them in, just give the pan a little jar. Yeah, yeah. Make sure they don't stick. Then don't touch them. Don't. Because you're not, with the exception of sitting here or falling asleep or uh, heroin nodding, <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> it's you don't? hard to burn it. It really is pretty hard to burn it. And believe it or not, we're going to take a little bit more time on the stove top with these than you think. And that's cool because we're going to barely fit. They're only going to be in the oven like three, four, five minutes. We're at 375. The kale is basically done. Jermaine said, do you ever use a gas stove or only electric? <laughs> well, that's all I have, Jermaine. Yeah, it's true. We're going to get a gas stove one of these days. You guys, we're going to surprise you guys. One day we're going to have electric. The next day we're going to have gas. It's going to be amazing. No. What? That's never happening. It is. What if I surprise you? Oh, my God. Are you going to do that? No. No. <laughs> How hot is your pan? The, the pan is on... Well, it should be at medium high. Seven-ish. But medium high. Here, get a member. Uh, well, for one thing, I don't want to call Safe Touch again. No, Safe Touch came a couple weeks ago because I couldn't answer their phone call because I was filming you. But here's the cool thing. Okay. Tell me again. So, these are an inch and a half thick. You're not going to overcook them on the stove top. Okay. What you're looking for is how crispy you like it, really. So, I like mine a little crispy because the roasting process in the oven is really what's going to cook this steak. Because we're really cooking that that much of it all around. So that much is not done. Now, if you like yours rare, as soon as it gets done in this pan, eat it. Seriously, you're filling the oven for a few minutes. I mean, you can eat it that blue if you want to. I know a lot of guys love their beef like that. I don't. I like mine like medium rare. A little bit more on the medium side of medium rare. So, and what we do is you can see the sizzling in this pan. This is cast iron. The reason we use cast iron is because nothing it's carries super hot. Nothing carries heat. And nothing seared with cast iron. I learned that last time. Just nothing in the world does. Is this the best way to cook steaks or? It's all subjective again. Because it's my favorite way to eat beef. Because I like that crispy outer and I find it on a grill. And the egg is way different. And I have cooked the best steak I've ever cooked for myself ever in my life has been on the big green egg. Okay. It was, it was a bone-in uh, ribeye. And it was so unbelievably good. But the thing about the egg is you can get it up to six, seven hundred degrees. Sear your steaks off, shut it down, get it down to 350, throw them right in there, and, and roast them off like you would any other any other way. I mean, that's the great thing about it. Are we gonna do a big green egg edition? We are. We have to get weather to. to uh, yeah, it's to it's it's raining a lot. The weather stuff on it. It is. It is. It's hard to plan. It is hard to plan. So how long are you cooking this? Well, it's all about color. Okay. Do we like that color? We oh, do. that looks good. Look at that. Yeah. So, that's, and this is just still two sides. We're still gonna, we're gonna sear the, all the fat side. We're gonna sear that off. Yep. We want that. We want that fat crispy. I mean, why do you like bacon, guys? You like you, the bacon. The fat. Let me, let me just cool you on something. <laughs> it's not the meat you're in love with. <laughs> it's the fat. The fat holds that smoke flavor. That's what you know is is bacon is that beautiful flavored fat. Beef is the same way, man. Hey, Holly wants to know if you use a splatter cover or do you just expect me to cook, clean up all your crap? No, I expect you and or our daughter to clean up everything in this house. Holly, that's or, awful. Is that our Holly? That's our Holly. The Tori got her little baby filet. We're almost going to press on that already because it's pan's so hot. Where do you fit? Do we finish this in the oven? Yeah, we're going to finish it. Oh, okay. Cool. We're going to sear all these sides. And the good thing is, once we get these in the oven to cook a few minutes, we can move our demi over, spread yeah. that off, and while our steaks come out, our steaks are going to have to rest for a minute. Right. We probably won't let them rest because we're already an hour and 15 minutes into the show. Are we really? Yeah, we're an hour and 15 Oh, minutes. my gosh. We try to so, keep it down for you guys. But this is Father's Day, so it's going to be a little bit longer this time. So okay. So. Do you always use cast iron with your steak? Yeah, because it gives the best crust. And, I, and also... One of the reasons I put butter in the pan is butter has this magical browning plate, browning thing. That's why I, so I use specifically half or a tablespoon of uh, vegetable oil and about half a pat of butter, which is about a teaspoon or so of butter. The butter gives that great, crispy, beautiful flavor that you love, and it gives you the texture you want. And we love it. Look at the little flake. They said, "Don't worry about the time. They're they're enjoying." Oh, 
you know, it works. We're going to go ahead and tear our side. Can I turn this off? Yep. Wow. Can move right up. And this entire pan is going in the oven. And then we're going to move our gimme over and we'll finish that. Okay. We'll let our steaks do their thing. Yeah. Them out. We'll let them rest for a few minutes. We'll chat. We'll answer some questions. We'll tell you about a bunch of cool stuff we have coming up. And then we'll cut our steaks and we'll place this meal up. And that way your pot will love you again. Hey, um, Alex wants to know if you can cook a meatloaf on the cast iron. I bet you could. Of course you could. Now, you'll have to get, some, get it bound together well. What I suggest, that, that's actually a great idea. You know what I suggest? Make your meatloaf in advance. Right. In the fridge. And let that, let that get real cold, that fat. Because as you work the meatloaf, believe it or not, the heat of your hands starts melting the fat and hammering me. Right. Look at that sear. Oh, so good. How come the butter doesn't burn? I don't uh, know. Because we, we, but that's what the, uh, that's what the vegetable oil is for. Okay, okay. So the vegetable oil doesn't allow it, the butter to burn. It keeps the butter from burning. Gotcha. So that's what we use it for. It's all science. You know, we, we want that butter to give our browning uh, uh, texture, but we don't want it to burn and get bitter. And that's why we temper it a little bit with the, uh, with the vegetable oil. We find that that works quite well. This demi gloss is going to be... While we're looking at the demi gloss, can you tell uh, Josh's mom, Liz, hello? Hey, Liz, how are you? Aw. So good to hear from you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Look, I appreciate all you guys watching and tuning in. This is fun for us. We enjoy the show. We enjoy doing this. Right? Also, guys, you know, as we grow the show and reach out to people who want to sponsor it so we can keep bringing the show over and over, um, just so you guys know, it's on our side. Tori actually resigned from her job. I did. And she's going to be working on PTK full time to bring you great events. We have some really cool stuff. Really, honestly, guys, we're taking this real seriously. And we love sharing this time with you guys. And we want to, like, go out and do some great flavortations. We are working on a plan to go to Savannah, Georgia right now with a great... Um, oh, my God. I can't wait. With a, uh, with a travel agent that specializes in this that we can't tell you about for other great trips in your life. Maybe you want to go to Europe. Uh, for six or seven days and travel around Italy and eat and, and see. Well, that's what this person does. And hopefully, in a couple of weeks, we'll have her sealed up. And we'll tell you more about her as well. Um, we, also, as you watch the show at the end, we would ask that you share the program. Like when you see the video, give us a share. That way your friends can see it and maybe they like it. And as we keep growing the audience, we can bring you guys more special edition stuff that really kind of suits us all as we start looking for a great flavor in our lives. Hey, Quinn. Let me go around my... Okay. Yeah. Yep. Oh, look at our potatoes. Oh, our potatoes look so good. You know what? Are they almost done? I think they're done. They so, are? Let's move our dimmy over here. Okay. Let's turn off. Let's turn that down. Turn that off. Now, look at our dimmy real quick. Can you see it on there? I can. Now, what do you notice about that that wasn't there a minute ago? Well, it's the top nice and shiny. It's got that beautiful sheen, it's doesn't it? The fat all it, over. It's like glossy, right? Okay. That's good. That's what we want. What Thank we you, Reagan. Thanks, Mr. Eaton. Thanks, Miss Rita. Uh, Chris doesn't like steak, but he loves our show. Oh, why doesn't like steak? Is, is he a communist? Babe, I didn't like steak like six months ago either. Oh, I thought he was a commie. No. Oh, okay. I'm from Georgia. I'm not a commie. And I didn't like it. Okay. So, so you can use a regular like colander. I like the Spiner Whisk because okay, we're gonna mash the flavor. Bubba Wilson oh. is hey, watching what's up, us. Bert? Good to see you, buddy. What's up, Bert? From... How are you, buddy? Wolf ass in the house. I love it. Wolf we'll ass likes good food, buddy. He knows. The wolf ass loves good food. Can we show him what we're cooking? Sure. Give me one second. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, so, this is our poor man's demi gloss. Okay. What you see there is carrots, celery, onion, garlic, red wine, which we're going to add a little bit more here in a minute, and herbs de Provence. Yeah. Or de Provence. De Provence. And if you'll notice. If your French is de Provence. Look at that. Wow. Look now at look that. at that hand, right? Stick your finger in there, child. I don't want to stick. It's hot. Maybe it's not that hot, I promise. I will eat that, though. No, God, you don't want to eat that. Why? I bet that would be so good. You see this in the pigs, baby. <laughs> no. What you are do? you talking you see, about? You see this in the pigs. All right. So those veggies are gone. They're all done. We don't need them anymore. Yep. Our pan goes right back over. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're not going to do that yet, though. Isaiah said, ew. 
Why would he say ooh? I don't know. Table he just of, he just did. Tablespoon of butter. Okay, so we've gone through an entire stick of butter this meal. Not quite. Yes. The, yes, we have. This is the dad meal though, so right. it's okay. Okay. What are we doing? Oh, this is gonna go on top of the steak. Oh my God, Chad said, time out. Why doesn't Jimmy use propane? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> we would love to use propane. Mushrooms in with some butter. Now, the great thing about mushrooms is this. Mushrooms tell you when they're done. They don't yell out, hey, I'm done. What they basically do, because here's what's gonna happen. When your mushrooms start getting where they're cooking right, they're gonna yeah. release some, they're gonna start releasing liquid. Okay. Which is exactly when you know they're right. Let me see that. Hold up. Wow, look at that. So Bray's going look at her look, where's our stock? Yeah. Our stock is all well, cooked out cooked or it's out. inside there. That's right. That is ready to go. We don't need to do anything. Hey, anymore. who's who's putting angry faces across here? Why would they do that? I don't know. They don't have anything better to do. It's fine. So we're going to saute these onions down, or these uh, mushrooms, all right? And they're going to start cooking just straight, believe it or not. Oh, straight. they said everything's awesome up until you add fungi. Oh, come on, stop. <laughs> Our potatoes are done. Okay, let me see. Man, look at that. <laughs> Alex said his wife um, cuts up mushrooms with an egg slicer. That's cool. That actually works great. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, we do have a YouTube website. Oh, yeah, we have a... Uh, Primetime Kitchen. Yeah, YouTube channel. Yeah, just look for us. Yeah, We're on there. Me too, me too. It's been a long show. I'm so sorry, guys. No, they love it. They All said right. it's fine. All right, cool. We're almost done. Steaks are almost done. John also said all good until the mushrooms came out. Well, here's the thing. The great thing about this, don't use them then. You don't have to. If you want to do some onions instead, you can. But the great thing, so if, we're, if you don't like mushrooms, then that's yep. great. Because I know Tori doesn't like them. I, d I can't have them. They're so, not good for your thyroid if you have bad thyroid. So I'm just going to show you that basically that is kind of amazing. Yep. Yeah. Now look at these mushrooms. See how they're getting glossy? Yeah. That's water. Those are ready to go. Let's go and put our dimmy right back in. Okay. Mmm. Now look, down we go. Hey, what temp do you have the oven on for the steaks? 375, but it's actually, you know what, it's probably more like 350 in a, a home oven. Okay. And they're ready. Well, let's use this, because I tell people to do this all the time. Okay. Meat thermometer. You want your steaks to be perfect? Spend $6 on a meat thermometer. In the middle, we're looking for 140. 140. 93, now. 97, 99. Look at that, up we go, not quite there. Now the great thing is this, even if you don't like using the meat thermometer, now I know I have about, that's probably gonna go up to about 115. So let's pull it out. Let's okay. Turn. We have about two more minutes and those will be up to done. Wow, okay. And we're gonna keep cooking that down. Hey Ricardo. Oh, Jen, I have Hashimoto's too. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so you shouldn't have like broccoli and you shouldn't have really? mushrooms. Yeah. Wow. I've learned this. It suppresses your thyroid. Which is, you just don't like them because you don't like the way they taste. No, no, no. It's because of that. I mean, yeah. I like mushrooms. Huh. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't like pick it to be on my pizza, but if right. you wanted to slather my steak with it, okay. I would. I may partake. Are we putting more butter in? This is a really fatty meal, buddy. It's Father's Day. Good <laughs> Lord, dude. Your pot deserves it. He's going to be dead soon anyway. <laughs> that's right, awful. So look at here. Okay. So, that's still not even close to being as thick as we want. Hey, Jen. I can't wait to play this. Is one. this how we normally cook ribeyes? No. Oh, uh, that's not ribeyes. That's New York Strip. It's New York Strip, Justin. Hey, what brand of knives do you use? Shoot. S H U N. You can get them at Wassie's Meats in Melbourne, <clears throat> and you should support them because they support us. They do. They support and us. Hey, you know what else? So here's what you want to do. I'll tell you a great thing. So okay. go, go over to Wassie's 
and look at the place. One thing, big green eggs, if you don't have one and you're cooking outdoors, you're behind. It's that simple. It's, you're behind because it's unbelievable. They have so much cool stuff, Yeti stuff, Shoon stuff, and ask Janice about that cool-ass little bar they know about over on the beach where you can go get lunch, right? Yeah. Tori, how cool is that little bar? So fun. Live music, you can see the ocean. Hey, it's what was the name of it? I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, uh, we had a good time. Is it something Joe's or something? Allison, I made the flowers on the wall. I bought this. So this is a... It's a garden. A garden steak. Um, that you just stick in your garden, and it was plain, and I thought it needed color, and I threw some color on it, and I hung it in my kitchen. It's a little weird, I know, but I love it. And it kind of goes with everything. coming out. Jason said, you're super lucky to have an awesome video taker. Oh, my God. <laughs> I agree, Jason. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Steaks mm -hmm. on a resting plate. Okay. And why do we rest them? Because you want that, you want that muscle. Because what happens is that muscle gets tight. You want that muscle to kind of relax. Okay. And Let me see. You know, look, I'm sitting in it at an angle. Okay. And look what's happening already. It's draining. Yeah. So okay. that's going on. Our, that's going in under our demi gloss. Now, you would say, well, why wouldn't you use this? Well, I don't want to use this because if I put that in, that's just fat. Okay. Now that's not going to help me out creating flavor for my uh, for my sauce over here. Okay. Because it'll just make it real fatty. We don't want that. Okay. We want this beautiful, almost semi-clear red. It's going to be this beautiful maroon red. Now, speaking of that, when you add wine to dishes, add it in stages. It was Lou's Blues, right? Yeah, it's Lou's Blues. It exactly. was. It was Lou's Blues, Don. So, right here at the end. Okay, I'm sorry. Are, two, is that mine or two, yours? Two tablespoons. That's it. That's enough. That's all we're using. Oh, my God. Because here's the thing. You can cook the flavor of wine out of a dish. That's why most pros... Add it in stages. You always finish a little bit with the wine. So right. You want that pre if you want that that flavor present, finish a little bit. Now I probably should have put it in about ten minutes ago. Okay. But that's still going to cook now, so we still have a few minutes left before that's ready to go. Look All at right. this beautiful juice we're getting on our steaks already. Look at that, and our fancy, bougie, paper plate. Fancy bougie paper plate. <laughs> and uh, oh, so while this is uh, while these steaks are resting. That is a china paper plate. It is. While these steaks are resting, and while um, while my uh, sauces continue to reduce, because all we're going to do from now is add butter to this. That's it. Uh, I want to remind you guys. Uh, hey, things, Tanya. Some things we have going. So we have a website called ptkradio.com, and we're putting up a bunch of content, and we're really starting some cool stuff. I'm going to tell you about some things coming up probably as early as next week. We're going to feature something there called Side Dishes. Yeah. And it's going to be interviews in my home studio with... Guys like Scott Maxwell, guys like, you know, writers and... and Clausman. Yeah, Clausman. And Daniel. Daniel. Just anybody that, like, you would think would be interested to find out, like, what they like to eat, their life a little bit. It's going to be more, like, about them and about kind of a more Danish type thing. It's kind of what I want to try to, you know, something kind of a little bit more organic than just, you know, the straight cooking stuff. Uh, because I think there's some very interesting people in this city, and I kind of want to know about them, and I know that I think you guys as well. Also, we're all going to, we're going to start a tip and a technique quick video segment on that website as well, where we're going to yeah. give you little tips. Like making the space chamel sauce would have been one of them. Something we can do in a like couple minutes. Like 30-second videos and stuff like that, the, right? Yeah, the max would be okay. a couple minutes. And it's just basically show you some things that I've used over learning how to cook in my life that I think you can use, and maybe all the time that I was trialing, erroring, and wasting all that money and time, right. maybe I can save you guys a few minutes and get you on the path to making some great flavors for your family as well. Um, again, tomorrow night, we're going to be at Marlowe's Lee Vista yep. for our PTK Live, or our June version. We're going to have a shoe knife, just like this. Frank Wassey, the nicest guy in the world, uh, gave one of this to give away tomorrow night, so you can get your tickets if there are any available, because I really don't know if there are. Right. Friday night, you can also call Harry's Poolside Bar and Grill. It's at Rosen Center, down on I Drive. It's for their big pairing with Goose Island Beers, another great sponsor of our show, whom we love dearly. Uh, and we're pairing up a five, six course center with those guys. And I will tell you, Chef Talaluna is one of the most creative, inventive chefs in the city of Orlando. And he will probably never give you credit for being that, but the guy creates flavors like you can't So believe. good. And he always I'm surprised puts, every time and, we and go. He puts some of that great Mexican culture of his that he loves so much in all those dishes. And guys, I'm telling you, he creates some magical, magical stuff. And I, that's going to be awesome. And I genuinely don't know if there are tickets left for that. They're $55. They should be $100. 
But they're great because you get so much to drink and eat. It's so much fun. It's true. And then coming up in July, we're going to be out in uh, Orange City at Jack's 29, I believe. It's the new card room out there. They got a beautiful restaurant hooked up. We're going to there. And it looks like in August or September, we're going to be at... Look at all of that. Yeah, I know. We're going to be at uh, uh, Millennium 106. That's going to be Plus, fun. We're going to the Space Center. Hey, we're coming to the west side of town, guys. West side. West side in the house. Look at this. Now, this I want you to come look through. Okay. So when you start cooking stuff like this now, see those bubbles forming on the top? Yeah. Those are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? And you can tell already, see how that we have that beautiful, uh, that texture that we want, that shine that you can see on the mushrooms? Yeah. These are only about one minute away and that's perfect because our steaks need about another minute or so to rest and then we can plate this dish up and how long do you rest the steaks eight to ten minutes okay cool let me see the kale mm. oh my god look at that kale not my favorite okay. Okay, that was a little bit of red wine vinegar just a couple of sprinkles of red wine vinegar and a little bit of chili plate. oh you're right jason china is bougie <laughs> Chocolate. Chocolate. Hey, we are coming to um, Orange City. Yeah, just like that. yeah, yeah. but we're not Daytona or Port Orange. But that's pretty close. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's 20 minutes, guys. Yeah, it's 20 minutes. 20 minutes. See how long this stuff takes to cook? <laughs> it's crazy. Now, I'm, I'm, making, I'm making half a cup or a cup of this stuff. If you want to make like a quart, this is a half a day type thing to make this dimming. Hey, they want to know when we're coming to Winter Garden again. We have, well, we're getting close. We're going at the Mall at Millennia at 106, Millennia 106. Okay. So that's kind of close, but we need to start working on that for sure. Crooked, to be honest with you. We'll see how that Crooked can? Crooked, this guy's great. That'd be nice. I mean, really, really, really Hey, nice. we're in Orange City. They're just coming in. Jack's 29. Jack's 29. The, the new card room. Okay. They have that great restaurant hooked up to it. We're going to go do a uh, pizza game out there. Let's, um, let's plate this dish. Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to add a little butter to our dimmy. Okay. Do you get that beautiful, rich shine that we love? Okay. And that's just a finish. How much thing. butter was that? Uh, Two pads? Tablespoon and a half. Okay. And it just gives us this beautiful flavor that we want. This is also a time you would test this mm -hmm. with a spoon to kind of see how you're doing there. And uh, exactly <laughs> what we're doing. AJ said eight minutes seems long. <laughs> is that good? So good? Your dad is going to be pretty happy. Yeah? Make this for your dad. Your okay. Dad All right. What did, what did Jason say about it being long? Jason said eight minutes for letting steaks rest seems long. Is it because he's hungry? I don't know. He Although just said hungry? it seems long. All right, here we go. So, my favorite thing cooking is plating. I hope to be dead honest with you. My, it is. My, my favorite thing when I cook a meal... My favorite thing in the world is to play the meal. Now, these potatoes aren't going to really allow us to get super fancy. Yeah. Because what I wanted to do is do a like do a uh, a Napoleon where I kind of punch down in there and, and find it. Yeah. But when I'm plating, I want the best. Like I want that that piece that's got the cheesy part. So that's what you want to get. So I'm gonna go down there and get it. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. The internet went out on that. <laughs> it's a real good ninja. All right, so we have our potatoes on our plate. Yep. These are these beautiful cheesy scalloped potatoes that we made earlier today. Yep. With ease, very delicious. So we're gonna do our strip. Okay. Medium rich, right on top. Wow. Oh, slippery little devil. Right on top there. It's good. And now we said earlier the kale is just. You're just kind of spreading it out? Yeah, just, you know, it's just honestly, it's just for a little bit of different texture on the plate. Okay. No big deal. And then the star of the show, of course, is this ridiculous, this right here. This great mushroom sauce, this mushroom demi, poor man's demi. That's when we come right on top. This mushrooms. That go. looks amazing. <laughs> Yummy. So, what we have here is your pan-seared New York strip, medium rare, really nice. 
scalloped potatoes and braised kale. That's a great Father's Day dish with some poor man's demi-gloss that I think your old man will like a lot. Take a little bit of time to cook, but really, to be honest with you, I would have had these potatoes in a long time ago, had them cooked, ready to go. But I wanted to show you guys all the techniques of making the bechamel. Um, and again, I think that's a cool dish you can make for your family, your pop. He'll really enjoy it. Takes a little bit of time. You know, in the real life, let these potatoes cool a little bit. Let that, let that sauce congeal and then kind of pull that out so you can pull that steak up, stack it up, spread that green around, make it look really, really nice. Hope you guys enjoy this recipe. It's really, really easy to make. And I don't know a dad out there that wouldn't like to jump into some cheesy potatoes, a delicious medium rare steak with that beautiful rich sauce and some mushrooms, a little crunchy kale with some bitterness. It's really going to go well together. Pair that up with a great cab or a Pinot Noir, maybe even a Petite Syrah. Any great little dry red wine, red wine will work great. I also want to remind you guys, uh, go to ptkradio.com. We have some merch on there. Brand new coffee cups came in today. We have some t-shirts, two different styles, some glassware, some tumblers. And we have free stickers. If you want a free sticker from us, the PTK sticker, just email us, primetimekitchen at gmail.com. We'll gladly send you a sticker out. And you got to stick it on your car, though. Yeah, you got to put it on your car and send us a picture. <laughs> and if you buy a t-shirt or something, please take a picture and send it to us and put it up. And if you make this meal, please, after Father's Day, stick a picture up for us. We love to share with our friends. Uh, remember tomorrow night, if you want to come out, it's uh, Primetime Kitchen Live. We'll record the show live, do some games. Your chance yeah. to win a 10 inch shoe knife, courtesy of Wassie's Meat, yeah. the presenting so sponsor of Primetime Kitchen on Real Radio 104.1. Plus, we'll have a great pairing of Goose Island beers and delicious food from all of us head chef. Uh, that's Lee Vista, and you can go to, uh, um, you can actually go to at their website at Marlowe's and buy your tickets there. Go to Primetime Kitchen's Facebook page. All the menu is there. The website's there. Of course, the phone number, call and reserve. And I think you probably want to do that quick. And if you missed that event, maybe you can catch us at Harry's Poolside Bar and Grill Friday night for Bye. the big pairing that we're going to have with Chef Tella Luna. Uh, that's another great night with a reception beer. Uh, it's going to be a great time. UNC is going to be there. They're a great brewery as well out of Salt Lake City. And again, if you could, if you like the video tonight, give us a share. We want to keep this thing going and bring you guys some more great flavors. And don't forget to visit ptkradio.com. This has been episode six, guys. I hope to see you next week for episode seven right here at Primetime Kitchen's How Tuesdays. We'll see you next Tuesday right here at seven o'clock. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.